Hello and thanks for joining. Today's topic is going to be the Office 365 Excel tutorial number seven. And we are going to review some examples of how to use data validation within Excel, Office 365. So what I've done here is I've created a really simple spreadsheet. I have a column for a student ID. I have a requested appointment date. Let's assume this is a, for a guidance counselor. And then the a, a major uh, column for them to enter their college major. So the first thing is under the student ID, we might want to make it so that they can't enter anything here. We might want to make it so we know that all the student IDs in this example have to be seven digits long. So what we probably want to do is set up a rule that says your entry has to be seven characters long. So there's many different ways to do this, but I'm going to show you a few simple examples here. So in order to set up data validation, we need to go over to the ribbon and the menu system and choose data. Go over to the data tools and then there'll be a data validation button. I'm going to go ahead and select it and then we get the data validation pop up. So what do we want to do here? We want to um, we want to hit the drop down for allow and in this case we want to do restrict the entry based on length so we're going to say text length and we're going to say the data has to be between seven characters minimum and seven characters maximum. So another thing that we might want to do is go over here and do an input message and say uh, please enter your student ID, enter your seven digit student ID. Okay, and we could enter a title there if we wanted to. I'm not going to right now. And if we can enter an error alert, and then the error, if they were to enter nine digits as an example, we're gonna we want an error message that says you have entered an invalid student ID. ID. Please re-enter your ID. Okay, and I'm going to say okay. And then what will happen here is anytime you go, you hover over that, that uh, cell, it's going to prompt you to enter your seven-digit student ID. If I enter, for example, six digits, hit return, and now I get an error that says you have entered an invalid student ID. Please re re-enter your ID. I'm going to say cancel. If I enter too many digits, eight digits, I get the same error. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Now I'm going to go ahead and enter. Oh, that was too short. Now I'm going to enter the right number, seven digits, and you see that it took it successfully. So now the requested appointment date, we don't want users or students to be able to enter dates previous from today, we might not even want to let them enter today as a date. So it has to be now or, or in the future. Um, so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go, we're, again, we go to data, then data validation. And we're going to go over here and we're going to go to the settings tab. And we'll start off, we're going to hit the drop down and we're going to choose a date. Okay, and then what we're going to do is say, uh, we can say, we can leave it, uh, we can do between, we can leave it as between, but you see you have all these options, you can do greater than or less than and so forth. We're going to leave it at between, and then if we want to allow them to enter today for a requested date, there is a built-in formula called today, and that's equals today in open parentheses, and the end date we might say this would be... I don't know, let's say 12, 20 of 2024. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now if I enter that, if I enter, let me enter a date from the past. I'll do 01, 01, 2023. And you'll see I get an error. Okay, so I'm going to go, and that's a generic error, by the way. If I enter... A future date of let's say um, 10 10 of 2023 it will accept it okay if I, I can do that all the way up to the maximum date that we're going to allow so next thing I'm going to do 
is oh let me do this I'll go in here too and I'm gonna I'll do the same thing under data validation I'll go ahead and put an input message please enter a date enter a future date here future date for your request all right and then what well, let me go back there one time and I'll go error alert you have entered an invalid date Invalid date. Okay, so I'm going to say okay. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to have the user select a major. Okay, we don't really want users to type in their major because they might call it one thing and it might be a different one and it would cause confusion. So you want them to follow one of the you know predefined majors. So you can do this a number of ways. We're going to go under data validation and we're going to go over here and under the validation criteria, we're going to choose a list. Okay. There is multiple ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and, and show you one example. So I can go over here, for example, say finance, marketing, Computer science and, and, and we'll just start with these four as an example okay and I'll say okay and now you'll see the user will get a drop down and they'll be able to choose one of those okay the downside of that is every time that you add a major remove a major from the list or any, whatever the list is you have to go in the data validation and change it another thing that you can do is I went over here to the references tab and I created a column on this column a I have a, a list of several majors I can go back into the the data validation I can delete the manual list and I can go over here to references and I can highlight all of the majors and you'll see it will reference them automatically and I say okay Okay, now I have them all. And now if I go here and I go to references and I go, oh, I forgot. Uh, let's say if I go here to the end, end one, the end cell here on the, on the list, and I say we wanted to add chemistry as a major. Now I'll go back here and you'll see we have a little bit of a problem. It's not there in the list. I've added it into an existing column but if I go to data validation you see I reference from A2 to A9 and you see it's it's an absolute reference to those cells so what I can do here there's a couple different ways to do it I'm going to delete it there I can go in here and I can insert it and now I can go back and now you'll see it's in there and it added it into the list because I inserted it in the middle of the range and now if I go to data validation you see it automatically it dynamically updated instead of ending at A9 it ended at A10 but another thing that you can do here to make things even simpler is you can go in and go into what's called a name manager here and that is under the formulas uh, you will see something called name manager. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click it and I'm going to create a new name, right? And I'm going to call it majors. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to over here under the references, I'm going to go ahead and highlight them all without the majors on the top of it. And I'm going to say, okay. All right, and now I have a table name majors. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Okay, so now that we've created a, a table name using the name manager, we can go back to data validation, and we can, instead of referencing cells A2 to A10, what we can do here, let's go here, let's wipe out those references, 
and you can put in that table name. The other thing that you can do if you don't remember, let's say you created multiple tables, uh, you could go over here and you could do a function F3 after the equal sign, and it'll pop up all the list of, uh, of, of uh, tables that have been named with that name manager. I'm going to say OK. And you say OK, and there you have your full list. So if you're interested in this content and other, con other similar content, please subscribe. Thanks for joining and have a great day. Take care.